You got this, keep going. Oh, let's go. You're almost there, keep going. Oh, so keep going, keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Oh. Come on. You got this. Oh, good. 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 Right now we're doing a showdown inspection. We don't typically do this on an RSP Joe weekend, but uh, we don't make the rules, we just abide by them, right? So right behind me, right over here. That's all I got, that's all I brought with me. So this is what one should look like, having all their gear. And little old Sergeant Swartz over here, looking a little slim, looking a little light. Dina, look at me. Say I do. I do. Take you. Take you. To be my lawfully. Lawfully. Wedded. Wedded. Husband. Husband. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> Which one? Cuál fue? Which one was it? Shota ta. Voy a Cetina, venga. ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál de dos? La niña se acabó. ¿Eh? ¿Tiene que ser él? No. Which finger? Which finger is the good one? My child. My child. You my baby me. Hmm? ¿Cuál de dos fue? No, which one is a good one? ¿Cuál es? Y yo dije, no. ¿Cómo dice mamá que ponga los deditos? Mamá dice cómo. Which finger? <laughs> Mami, <laughs> she wants to do so badly. Mira, no me hagas pedir que me haga con esto. Ya no lo casi. No, ya no. Valentina. She's doing it on purpose. Why the way, mi amor? No, no, ¿cuál es el bueno? Mamá dice que ponga los deditos. Why are you trying? Me <laughs> pego, <laughs> ¿Quién? Dile. Con este, con este, con este. Go like this, go like this, thumbs up. No! Go like this! No, go like this. You know which finger to put. Go like this. Look! Valentina! Go like this. Valentina, what do you want? Arms, your shoulder height! I don't care if you're holding the water bottle! or how heavy your arm is. You grow up, you hold them. All right, let's stop. This morning we're gonna conduct PRT, then ACFT, orientation or familiarization. The ACFT is the Army Combat Fitness Test comprising of six events. As previously described yesterday, we will talk about each individual event. Have you participate? to get a feel of what to expect and ask questions. Is that understood? It is understood. Today's going to be a strength and mobility PRT session. Fatality. Untapped. Hood. Banging rage. Banging rage. Understand all. The banging rage. The banging rage. Fatality. Hood. Bites out of the air. Politics attention. Move! Hey! 
We have to close the preparation drill. Now we're going to move into the conditioning drill. One and two. First two breaks, take your knee. First exercise is going to be the power jump. Repeat after me. Power jump. Power jump. Here's the four count exercise. Strength position is as follows. Hands on hips. Straddle stand, shoulder width apart. On count one, you can bend at your knees, touching the ground. On count two, it's going to be at the apex, at the top of the jump, as high as you can jump. Count three is return to count one at the ground, with the hands touching the ground. On count four, it's back at the starting position. So it looks like this in real time. And get it! And get it! Exercise! On! Count! Alright, they're getting way too slow. It looks like this. Start position. Hoo. And get it. Next side. One, two, three. One, two, three. Understood? Yes, yes, yes. Then you just go and stand in a joint. Like a judo chop. Right? All space to where when you jump off. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Any yes. questions pertaining to this exercise? No, just so. Standing at the knees and the hips. Touching the ground, is that understood? Yes, it's okay. And make sure to keep the box straight. Yeah, because if you lose those. Right? Let me get a six minute pump. Let me get six. And you're you're tall, so you're probably tall. Oh, and then, uh, and then out. Square. There you go. Ooh. Just back in. Hell yeah. And then you gotta make sure that you're moving as a whole unit. You gotta stretch your arms all the way out. But get into a mixed space. Set. Go. Right. Hold. Back. Back, back, back. Cross the line, cross the line, cross the line. Cross it, cross it, cross it. Cannibals, cannibals, cannibals. Well, it's not, it's not easy at all. So, what was your uh, feeling about the spring drag carry? It's it's weird because like you have no weights, then you have weights. Like the laterals are easy because like I had no weight, but don't burn yourself out with the weights. Like when you're like dragging, because like. It feels easy at first. Once you cross the line, you gotta go back. You gotta remember that. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's where I messed up. Any advice to somebody else taking it? Oh, take your time with the weights. Don't like screw with the weights. Otherwise, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you. Good Thank job, you. man. Good job. Right. So he came in about 150. Not too bad. Not too bad for his first time. You got this. Keep going. Come on. Let's go. You're almost there. Keep going. Oh, keep going. Keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh, come on. You got this! Got it, got it, got it. Lateral! Lateral! That's good. Huh? Yep. That's good. You got it, you got it. Hey, doing good. Keep going, keep going. I'm up there. Like that. Like that. One more, one more. Come on, come on. You can do that. Just walk, you got it, you got it. Just walk. You got it, you got it. Keep going, keep going, you got it. Let's go, let's get this. See, this looks a lot harder than it looked. This isn't a lot harder than it looks. Alright? She's dying right now. She's dying. Let's go, let's go. 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 Let's go, let
Never quit, all right? Good stuff, that's why I want to see. <laughs> so you were struggling a little bit, right? Oh yeah. All right, so what kind of words of wisdom would you tell someone who's about to ship out the basic training? Don't give up. Don't give up, right? And you're gonna, you're gonna train harder now, right? Even harder. Okay, it's your first drill, right? Yes. All right, so that was a wake up call, yeah? Yes, yes. All right, so word to the wise, make sure you start working out before you leave. See, so here at the RSP, we get an advantage. They get to experience certain things before they leave. They get pre-basic training, so they know what they're going to get themselves into. So if you didn't experience this today, would you have made the decision today to work harder before leaving? Yeah, um, well, uh, of course, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not 100% here right now. <laughs> Still recovery. She's in recovery. I got her right after her sprint drag carry. But what I was saying was, without experiencing this now, do you think that you would have pushed yourself before leaving for training? Like, is, with this experience? No, no, because you don't have a clue. It's better to experience in order to be prepared. Right. Okay. So if you know what you're getting into, then you have you you can prepare there you better. Go. So because of this, you're gonna work harder to get ready for basic, right? Yes. Right. Never quit. Never. That's why I like the non-quitting spirit. All right, so we just completed the Army Combat Fitness Test familiarization, and we also did PRT, physical readiness training. It was a strength and mobility day, so we did preparation drill, conditioning drill level one and two, and recovery. We didn't do the four for the core because we were crunched for time. But with that being said, it was a successful day. The, the trainees, as you saw, got a good... Um, feel of what the, what to expect at the training site so they it's kind of like a wake-up call so some of some of you may be contemplating on whether or not to work out before you leave and I think as you can see with some of the two interviews that I did that it, they're gonna have to work harder to prepare themselves for basic training now yes you can technically go to basic training without working out and be successful but it would be in your best interest to work out before you leave and get to a basic level of fitness. I did a video about how to prepare for basic training. In the description area is a 90 day workout program. So go check that out. I'll link it down below so you can check that out. But get your mind right, get your body right, get it ready, at least that basic level of fitness before leaving. I'm telling y'all, you're gonna be one hurting unit. <laughs> I'm not lying. It's gonna hurt to cough, sneeze, laugh. I'm telling you, you're gonna wish that you worked out before you left. I'm telling you. We're teaching. That's the whole purpose of RSP. Yeah. All right. So when you guys get down there, you gotta know a lot more stuff. So between us and um, the active duty and like you know the other branches, right? And when you guys join, they don't see your recruiters until like the day you shit. For us, we teach you everything you need to know when you get down to training. So when they're like picking for like two, you know, PGs. Uh, squad leaders and stuff like that, you guys are the one they're gonna go to because you guys know all this stuff by the time you even get there. You're like, what? What is that? You get a rank coming in? You know you know how to um, do all these motions and drug ceremony and stuff like that. They're gonna look for you as leadership roles. Okay? So this, they're gonna know, right? Make sure you stay on top of it. All right. We're gonna go through this class. It's gonna be it's gonna be long. I'm gonna try to make it as short as possible. But I need you guys to participate. Go ahead. Uh, going through combat, basic combat training can be a big adjustment as you transition from your civilian life to being in the military. It can be challenging and tough. It is designed to be tough. Every difficult or challenging experience is an opportunity for growth as an individual and as a, and as a, a, a warrior. This class will help equip you with strategies for developing a healthy growth mindset. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, what does that mean, Solomon? What does that mean? What does that mean to you? Better. I think when you're in a civilian side, you're, you're always facing challenges and like quite the situations that are uncomfortable, but I think you're not given the opportunity to just quit like you're there. When I have to something, you have to create it. Some of the challenges that was like a bit of a hurdle when trying to overcome 
Waking up four in the morning every day. Every I'll say the being humble. Like when you're in the National Guard, the RSP, you get a lot of knowledge. You learn a lot of stuff. When you go, you have dudes from the reserves, active duty, and they're cramming and stuff. They're trying to learn. They don't know what rank structure is. So like immediately you're you're looked at as a leader. Um, but you can't let it get to your head. Like I went, fortunately I went with a bunch of guys from the National Guard, so we're kind of all on the same page. But the difference was so clear between us and the active duty reserve people. Like we kind of got smoked for knowing too much, if that makes sense. Like if, if I know something and he doesn't know it, why doesn't he know it? He's my bunk mate. Like why, why, why do I feel like I'm too good to help out? You can sit down there. <laughs> but like when you hear you're soaking all this knowledge, like make sure that you're paying it forward. Like it's it's about teamwork. Do you think our do you all think that RSP prepped you a lot better for basic than everybody your counterparts? No, hundred yeah. percent. Yes. People people who active duty, they sign a contract, they go home, six months later their recruiter calls them like, yo, like, are you ready? They're like, yeah, they go. Like we get this privilege to like come here every month, you get to be around sergeants, a drill sergeant, like People from active duty, they don't see a drill sergeant until they get to basic training. Mm -hmm. And it's a complete culture shock. Yeah. So like, fun fact for me, I was here for 17 RSP drills. So I knew how to do everything I learned that. <laughs> All right, so I, was, I was aware of case though. How many times you get yelled at? Every drill, right? Yeah, so it was like, I know how to counter column. I know how to like left flank, right flank. And when we got there, I was just like, I do not want to do this. Like I've been doing this for 17 months. But I had to, I had to just tough it out. You know? And people are going to talk don't get salty when they say, oh, you're in the National Guard. Yeah, I am in the National Guard. Guess what? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going home. That was my biggest, com that was my biggest thing. Poor they couch. always Poor talk couch. about me being in the Guard. So we can yep. You're better than everybody else. Let me, let me just put that in perspective for you, right? Who's your infantry? Who are infantry? Nobody here want infantry? All right, look, man. Let's say infantry. You think an infantry man on active duty waking up every day 4 a.m. kicking in the door and doing some real bang bang shoot em up shit? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Let's talk about artillery. You think of artillery or gun bunny? Who here at 13? Nobody. 13. You think they're waking up every morning and loading up the harbor and pulling that string to, to shoot sh Hell no. Active duty is a whole bunch of waiting around, waiting for that once a month that they're going to do a training exercise. BMCS. <laughs> BMCS. Getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. And you're still not ready, then you get ready, and then you do. It's a lot of waiting around. So don't let nobody tell you that they do more than you or anything. The one advantage that Active Duty has, they're on base all the time, and that's it. And they're free to go to anything they want because they're 24-7, they're meaning school-wise. Let's say you're like, yo, I want to go to school. I'm ready to get it promoted. They're just sending you. That's it. You're going when, you, when they say so. Here, that's their one advantage, and it depends how you look at it. Here is more of a conversation. Hey, when do you want to go to VLC? You've been selected for promotion. We don't want to mess up your personal life, but we want you to go soon. And you might be like, damn, I could go next month, but I want to go in three months because I'm working on my degree still or this. So that's the that's the one little benefit I would say they have because they're going at a drop of a dime whenever they told to. But other than that, they ain't doing nothing special that we're not doing. I'll tell you that right now. So don't think that they're doing shoot them up every day, but they're kicking in doors every day because they're not. It's impossible. 365 days a year, be kicking in doors and doing You guys have the upper hand from A to Z. Their contract starts the day they step foot in basic training. The day they step in reception, active duty reserves, day number one. Your day number one was however many months ago you signed your contract. You're getting paid to be here. Well, a lot of people don't talk about this, but like, and I don't know if you guys can relate, but like coming back from basic AIT, um, it's gonna be a little different. Um, I'm not, I can't like explain to you in words how different it is, um, but like just don't understate the fact of you like completing basic AIT and like coming back to like, Life almost, because like for me, like I finished my degree, like life was kind of on pause. You know what I mean? It's hard to like come from waking up at 4 a.m., going all the way to 1900, you know what I'm saying? The routine and then going, like just getting thrusted back into civilian life. You know what I'm saying? So just kind of mentally prepare yourself for that. Once you get to the end, like just remember, because you're in the National Guard, we have like an extra duty. Like you have to, like life is not the army anymore. Like you have to kind of worry about how are you going to fit both. Uh, and the second thing, Everything is dummy proof. Like everybody know what a claymore is, right? Yes. Right? A claymore even says front towards enemy. Like why do you think it says that? It's, it's all dummy proof. So that, that repel tower, they're gonna demonstrate it for you, and the guy's literally gonna let go. And he's gonna stay right in place. Cause you're gonna have somebody holding you still. So you can legit slip off or let go of the rope and you won't go anywhere. So don't be scared of that tower.
Don't be scared of anything because thousands and thousands of people have done exactly what you're going to do. Uh, and the second thing, everything is dummy proof. Like everybody know what a claymore is, right? Yes. Right? A claymore even says front towards enemy. Like why do you think it says that? It's, it's all dummy proof. So that, that repel tower, they're going to demonstrate it for you and the guy's literally going to let go. And he's going to stay right in place because you're going to have somebody holding you still. So you can legit slip off or let go of the rope and you won't go anywhere. So don't be scared of that tower. Don't be scared of anything. We did it. And we were scared, but we did it anyway. And we had to do it to come back home. The fastest way to leave basic NAIT is to just do everything you're told and graduate and come home. Listen, this one, I enlisted him two years ago. And he said, Sergeant, I hurt my foot and I did not go to sick call. You want to know why? And I said, why? He goes, Sergeant, I heard your voice saying, you better do it. You better come home. You better do this. You better do that. I've seen people going to sick call. They got recycled. i seen people doing this. They got recycled. Me? Nope. My foot didn't hurt. Nope. Sick call rangers. But regardless, like, um, you know, you re it's really just a, a mentality thing because no matter how bad the injury, like I actually fractured my leg and I downplayed the injury that they didn't find out until after it healed. So, you know, she's Don't, right. Like the, fast, the fastest way out is really just to get through your training. Let, because let me say one thing. Go on sick call if you know that you're injured, right? You take the risk when you go on sick call that you're gonna get sent home. The most common injury that you're gonna receive at base training is stress fractures in the shins and the hips, right? So you gotta ask yourself, am I hurt or am I injured? Because some of, some of us have that mentality that as soon as we're not feeling well, let me go to the doctor and check that box, make sure I'm all right, right? So if you go there and it's not that painful, not that big of a deal, you might want to keep it to yourself. Because then it's more like I'm hurt and I'm not injured. But if you're downright injured, then go see the doctor. Because if you go on sick call and there's a minor issue, because I had a guy in basic training, he just wanted to check the box, make sure he was all right. I know he had stress fractures so bad, even though he didn't feel the pain that much, they sent him home, discharged him from the army until he felt better and then he could reapply later. So, am I hurt or am I injured? We're not going to tell you you can't see a doctor. Now, as soon as you tell your drill sergeant, I want to go on sick call, regardless if you're feeling better or not, they're bounded by regulation to send you on sick call. You're going to go on sick call. Make sense? There was one kid that we had a red face, like four, four feet in there. He did not want to be there at all. So I was like, okay, bro. So like, okay. Whole battle. He still went to the forge with us. He still went to the end room. He saw us graduate. He was still waiting to go home. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to do basic in third person and see all your friends graduate. And still trying to <laughs> Listen up, y'all. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, I think these guys answered the questions. All right. I'll give you a round of Evaluate casualty, right? Right, so everybody here is gonna learn combat lifesaver skills, which stands, which is our military fancy term for first aid. We used to call it back in the 19th century when I went to basic training. We called it buddy aid. I went to basic training in the 19th century, 1999. We used to call it buddy aid, but now we call it combat lifesaver. So we're gonna do evaluate a casualty, right? So Evaluated casualty means is we're going to try to determine what is wrong with somebody who just got injured or has an illness. Okay? So what do you guys think the first step is? So the very first thing is you want to see if is this person conscious or not. And we check if this person is conscious by an acronym called AFPU. It stands for alert, verbal, pain, or unresponsive. You're like, all right, thank you, Sergeant Mayors. What does that mean? So if somebody is alert, what does that mean? Oh, hi, They're attentive. Hi. They're talking. They're attentive. They're moving around, right? They can say they're, they're coherent of what's going on. So if he's alert, I say, hey, are you okay? Yes, yeah, Sergeant Mayors, I'm okay. Okay, why well, are you laying on the ground? <laughs> it's just comfortable, sir. Oh, right to that. Right? So he's laying on the ground. If he's only, if he's only responsive to verbal, Stimuli. So right now he's not talking, right? He's just laying there. But I'm like, hey, 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 hey. And I see him move. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, he, can, he responds to me verbally. The next one is painful stimuli. Painful stimuli is you either touch him, you kick him on the side, you do a sternum rub, which I'm not going to do right now. You can pinch in between their thumbs here, their thumb and the finger. Can you see this? All right. And if he feels pain, if you see them squinting, then you know that they're responding to painful stimuli. And then the last one is you. What do you guys think you stands for? Um, what you going to do? <laughs> That's a whole sentence, not just for you. What you going to do? What you going to do? No, it stands for unresponsive. Unresponsive, right? Unresponsive means they're not responding to any of my stimuli. Anybody have any questions on how to evaluate the level of consciousness? That is step one, evaluating the level of consciousness. All right, what's step two? How about asking them what's wrong? Well, so how do you check for pulse? Two fingers on the neck. Two fingers on the neck. How else can you check on a pulse? The wrist. Where else can you check a pulse? Your heart. Where? No. Tomorrow. Right here, your femoral. Right, so there's a pulse here, there's a pulse here, there's a pulse here, there's a pulse on your foot. You guys know there's a pulse on your foot? It's called a pedal pulse. You can also push the heart rhythm on their Apple Watch. And then it'll give you a rhythm. How do you check for breathing? Put your hand on their stomach. ABC, so we said, put your hand on the stomach. That's good. That's how we check for breathing inside a helicopter. Because you can't hear it. Can't see it. You're moving. Put your hand on the stomach. You feel it. What, what are you feeling for? The inflation. Inflation. Rise of the chest. Right. Who here is going to basic combat training? Just one person going to basic combat training. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Easy. Are we all going? Everybody's going to basic combat training. So just so you guys know, all these scenarios are if you're in combat. Your recruiter told you not going to combat. <laughs> <laughs> Too late.